Hello everyone. Welcome to my quick tutorial on seed anatomy. Um, in doing seed anatomy, we'll talk about the three major um, parts of the seed. You need to know their names and their functions. Um, and in doing so, we're going to look at two of the major classes of plants. Um, they actually get their name from the anatomical features that are different between the two. Um, so, I'm going to divide this paper. Uh, we'll have one type of seed on this side and the other type of seed on this side from those two major categories. Um, so, I'm going to work on this side and then I'll bridge over to that one once you understand one version. Um, for these notes, I've got three different colors to help tell the three major parts apart, um, just for strategy of note-taking. So, um, on my first seed, I'm going to draw kind of an oval shape, uh, the way you may picture a seed. I'm not going to try to name what this seed type is, I'm just going to make it a generic um, seed. Um, inside that seed, I also want to draw the new baby plant. Um, with two little leaves that will appear first. And I want to draw its food source. I'm going to shade in that food source. Um, so you can see it's not a layer, it's actually the rest of the seed. Now let's give these some names. So the red that I've drawn here, that outer layer, um, is for protection, and it's called the seed coat. For protection. So an anatomy are the structures. So the anatomy is the seed coat. The um, physiology, the function, is for protection. Next layer, all the black that I've highlighted in on this, um, that is going to be your endosperm. Endo meaning within. Um, that is for nutrition. Depending on the type of seed, this may be a lot of starches or it might even be lipids. Um, starches and lipids. All right, last, the little baby on the inside, just like developing offspring in animals, term you know is embryo. Off spring from sexual reproduction. Now this may be sexual reproduction with another individual in the same species, or it could even be self-fertilized. But either way, it would still be the result of sexual reproduction, a sperm meeting an egg. Um, so the difference between this and what I'm going to draw over here, I drew it having two little leaves. These two little leaves are what separate the generic seed on the left side from the right. We call these first leaves cotyledons. Cotyledons. These are first leaves. And, as you can see here, I drew two little cotyledons. Alright, so we're going to take that two, make it a scientific word. Oh, you cannot see that. Sorry. Two cotyledons. Um, we're going to take that two, make it scientific. Dye, meaning two. And we're going to abbreviate cotyledons to cot. This is a dye cot seed. Named after the fact that the embryo has two cotyledons, two first seeds, or two first leaves. Generic on this side, I still want to show my seed coat. 
I'm even going to draw it the same shape just so that you don't start thinking shape is the differentiating factor overall. Uh, I'm going to still draw my embryo on the inside, but I'm just going to give this guy one seed leaf, one cotyledon. And then I still want to put my endosperm on the inside. Um, that is the endosperm, the food source, in the monocot. I'm going to draw my labels out. Endosperm is still represented by the black section. My blue is still going to be my embryo. The red is still going to be my seed coat. Um, but this time... I've only got one cotyledon. Therefore, let's scientificify our one. One is going to be, hopefully, you're right in saying mono. Oh, not mom. Sorry, mom. Mono. I'm going to abbreviate cotyledon to cot. So your monocot. So this is a monocot versus dicot. Um, depending on your, your course, you may learn a lot more differences between dicots and monocots, but this is where it got its original name. The fact that when this embryo emerges, germinates, it will germinate with one leaf or it will germinate with two leaves. Um, last one, um, just so you can see, some seeds will actually look differently. Oh, oh, sorry. Let's do an analogy. Seed coat, endosperm, embryo. Um, the, the way I always like to remember this is a good parent sends their young child off to school with a rain jacket, a lunchbox, and himself. Oh, that's poor. Let me try that again. A good parent sends their child, the embryo, off to school with a raincoat and a lunchbox. So the parent plant still sends the embryo off into the world with protection against the elements and food to start its life. Last one, I do want to draw some modifications. Often you see this in dicots that get modified. You'll still see a seed coat, but you may not actually see an endosperm. And that's because some dicots, their cotyledons, swell up and absorb the endosperm. So you'll still often, if you pick it apart, like a peanut or a pea or other legumes, like beans, black beans, um, you'll see that they're actually composed of two halves. The two halves of that peanut or that pea are the swollen dicots, those swollen first two seed leaves and you won't see the endosperm anymore. The endosperm and the cotyledons have merged. So that endosperm that used to be there is now integrated into the cotyledon leaves. So if you're one of my kids, we're gonna open up some peanuts and find this and still find what will become the root and peel apart and see the leaves themselves. Seed coat. Embryo. Absorbed. Endosperm. Details are a little more uh, nitpicky than that, but that is good enough for an understanding for now. Alrighty, everybody. Uh, for my students, I'll see you in class. Everybody else, good luck with plants.